the labels like addiction, ADHD, and autoimmune conditions, sometimes it's important to look beyond those labels. Today, I had a really interesting chat with my dear friend, Irene Lyon over on Instagram, and I wanted to share it here with you today on the Evolving Wellness Podcast, as well as on YouTube. So if you're listening to this, this is a replay of a chat that I did with my friend, Irene Lyon. A couple of quick things. If you're interested in her work, I'm going to put her YouTube channel in the show notes, as well as in the pinned comment. If you want to go and follow some of her free information, it is priceless. I'm also going to put links in for her programs. Her 12 week program, Smart Body, Smart Mind is open for registration. It only opens for registration twice a year. It will be open until next week on Thursday, the 22nd. So if you're interested, I will put a link to that in the show notes as well. Another quick thing I wanted to mention is that I get a lot of people asking for my 21 day program and my quantum nutrition program with a little bit less support and less commitment. So I'm offering those for this weekend only through next Monday at a very heavily discounted price up to 60% off for a 60 day access pass to these courses and without the support of my private membership group. So that if you want to do more of a self-study program and do the programs now, you're gonna have access to this lower price. So I'm also gonna put those down in the show notes as well, if you've been eyeing those programs, but the price has been a barrier for you. I also have tons of free resources that are always available to my community that will be down in the show notes as well. So if you're new here, I encourage you to take a look at those. Thank you so much for watching today's show and let's go ahead and jump into it. Well, I'm so excited to chat with you. We did a podcast episode this week. Yes. Um, so if you haven't watched that, it's a great episode and I have like a whole playlist of Irene videos on my YouTube channel and in my podcast at this point, because we've talked mm. so much about this topic because yeah. I really think it's, it's really crucial and you're in the middle of launching, um, smart body, smart mind. So there's a link to that in my product guide, which I think is the third link down. If anyone is watching this and you want, um, if you want to check out some of Irene's programs, it's in my product guide, third link down in my bio and you just open it up. You don't have to fill out anything to get those links. Um, and I'm going to repost this on YouTube also. So I'll put it in the, um, the pinned comment, but we thought we could just answer questions. Yeah. I had a question. Yeah. I am seeing a repeating theme and I always love to ask the smartest people I know these questions. <laughs> no pressure. What? <laughs> yeah, no pressure at all. <laughs> um, what are your th thoughts on ADHD and um, the nervous system? Ha yeah. And I'm sure maybe we'll get some, some questions from people yeah. watching. I would really well, love to know what you think I'm, about that i mean i'm going by my predecessors mm. people like gabor mate bessel van der kolk peter levine bob scare all these I, I i like i've been calling them the patriarchy of trauma healing because mm. they're like they're the good they're like the the guys that pushed you know, understanding this whole nervous system. So Vincent Felitti, who's the founder of the ACE study, for example. Mm. And, you know, I, I keep hearing over and over again, these, these men that are, you know, they're in their seventies, mm -hmm. of them are in their seventies. Peter's definitely in his eighties, you know, approaching maybe 90, I'm not sure, but they're, they've done this long enough to know that pretty much all these labels that we are dosing yeah. out, they're a result of dysregulation in the nervous yeah. system. And, you know, while I have no doubt, Sarah, that there are some pure genetic things, mm -hmm. I'm, not an, I'm not an expert in genetics. I never studied genetics, but from what I know, something like Down syndrome, mm -hmm. that's a genetic piece that's been, you know, messed up at some point. But just the other day on a, one of our alumni panel, which by the way, if anybody is wanting to really listen to some great stories, take some time to go to my YouTube channel and watch the panels mm. we've been doing. Mm. Um, I did one on last Friday, so a week ago today on the 9th. And the first woman, her name is Leora, she's a SBSM member. She said, I thought I had, and she named the things, you know, ADD yep. and, She's like, I don't have these things anymore. Yeah. And 
And um, even another, uh, I'm thinking of another alumni who I'm about to just do a parenting panel with. And I haven't talked to her about this, so I, I can't quote her on her beliefs, but she has said that, you know, she has what we would call autism and, and such, and so did her kids. And, but she's thriving, you know, she's, her kids are off to university. It isn't, it, it, there's just these, there's a spectrum. And I know we use that word mm -hmm. spectrum, but I don't even I like don't it because there are, yeah. some, there are some things, and you know this through your own journey with Alexis, right? Um, that are just, th that was a, an insult to right. the system that was not from you being a bad parent. Right. 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 Yeah. There was, um, a, there was a medical there, injury. There was a, there was, an, a, there was a toxin. Yeah. That, that put the nervous system into a swing, just the way um, an abusive parent is a toxin that's mm -hmm. different that will create dysregulation right. in the system. So um, I will get to answering the question directly in a second. So when I hear my predecessors and I listen to stories of people who are like, I thought I had OCD, right. I thought I had bipolar, I thought I had addiction and that was in the family and it's genetic. I thought I had all these things. And then I hear my, my mentors say, every label that we are giving people, if you really go down to it, is from trauma. Well, this, this is, I just want to throw something in there. Yeah. I, we've probably talked about this on a different podcast, but sure. I think it's so fascinating. Um, I come from a long line of alcoholics. Mm -hmm. uh, multiple people on both sides of my family, yeah. my dad's side and my mother's side, yeah. have died horrible alcoholic deaths, mm -hmm. young, in their 30s, mm -hmm. drinking to death, um, addiction, mm -hmm. alcoholism, drug addicts. I mean, mm -hmm. it is literally on mm -hmm. both sides of the family. Mm -hmm. I have seven years without a drink um, because I don't, it, it, it took me over, yeah. right? Uh, I did a, a genetic counseling yeah. session right. with Dr. Right. Dr. Anthony J, who I absolutely adore yeah. him. He's going to be next, next week's podcast cool. guest. If anybody's is a, a fan I of my podcast, yeah. He's, he was on the podcast back in 2021 and people still talk about that episode because it was so fantastic. Okay. But I did a reading with him of my genes in 2021 yeah. before I got pregnant. Cause I thought like, I thought there was maybe something genetic that was keeping me from getting pregnant. It wasn't, it was all mitochondrial. Um, but <laughs> I had him read my genes and he, he's like, Oh, people have, a, there is an alcoholism gene. There is a, um, a, a gene that makes you more sensitive to blue light. There's a gene, you know, all these different, it's very fascinating that he has, you know, yeah. kind of look, look at the genes that way. Yeah. He's like, you don't have the alcoholism gene. I'm like, what? Like, Who's what? Joke on that? Yeah. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> like all these people on both sides of my family, both all like died. Now, am I going to go out and go uh, pick up a drink? No, I'm, I'm not messing with it. I'm just not going to mess with it because yeah. it's burned me too many dang times. And I would yeah. prefer just to, to continue. <laughs> I've got a good seven year run. A lot of things have been going really well for me in the last seven years. Um, I've done your programs. I've done, I think, the, the, mm -hmm. all of them. Um, but I think that's been imperative yeah. in helping me feel better and be medication free and, and all of that. Uh, but just, you know, I think a lot of us kind of live and die Label. by genetics and yeah. labels and diagnoses. Yeah. I've been diagnosed with depression. I've been diagnosed with ADD. I've been, I, at one point, my doctor was like, I think you can possibly have bipolar. Guess what? I was drinking were, alcohol and so taking antidepressants at the same time. Yeah. Of course, you're going to think I'm bipolar. Like I was like a freaking drinking myself to death. Mm -hmm. So yeah, of course, I'm going to feel yeah. bipolar. But like there was something that was causing me to self-medicate. Yeah. And I know that it was, there was a huge yeah. nervous system piece in place. There was a nutritional deficiency yeah. piece. There was a circadian piece. Yeah. It's all, it all comes together. But I think that we get so caught up and it, I see it time and time, you know, in my private group and in my, I have XYZ, I have uh, ADHD and people with ADHD have blah, 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 blah. Not to discount the trouble that no. they deal with and the, the issues that they deal with, but I'm always asking the question, like, how much is the nervous system? And then, you know, maybe some nutritional deficiencies and the other things that I teach about, how yeah. much is that yeah. impacting you, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, if we, we, we both know, and I'm doing, trying to educate my, my folks that follow me that yes, the nervous system is 
in my opinion, and I'm biased, <laughs> but um, I think we can, most people agree through the research and, and the science and enough people doing this work that it is a massive mm -hmm. piece of these labels. Now, I also know that, like you said, nutrition, getting outside, not enough movement, you know, I, if I don't get enough movement and don't eat well, I don't sleep well, you know, so it's, it isn't that I have a problem with that sleep. It's just something was off in my mm -hmm. body. So, um, you know, just the other day, Sarah, another talk, someone was asking about, um, I can't even say the word. It was, it, it's like in that cluster of um, ailments that people would be diagnosed when they're kids mm -hmm. because they can't, they can't do math. They, mm. they put things like dyslexia. dyslexia yeah. Right. And the other one was that I had never heard this dyscalculia. Cal like it's basically trouble with numbers. Interesting. I wonder if I had that. And I was still like, hate well, math. well, and the thing is, is that that was me. I mean, I, yeah. if I was now, like if I was a kid now, I have no doubt that my parents would have me on medication. Same. I could not, I was terrible at school. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't think straight. I couldn't mm -hmm. do math. I was like a C minus student through all elementary. It wasn't until I got into university and I actually really wanted to study at a university mm -hmm. level that I freaking studied to get mm -hmm. into university and get my grade 12 maths up and chemistry, but it was, did, it did not right. come simply like it was right. tough. Right. Um, but when I look back, as, as I learn more about myself, I was in functional freeze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, through some things that happened to me when I was young, um, the chemical trauma mm -hmm. that I was exposed to the crappy eighties diet of craft mm -hmm. dinner and, you know, Spat chicken, baked chicken, three nineties. Yeah. Right. Yep. Peroni and yep. all these things that, you know, our parents just thought were great because mm -hmm. they were working. I mean, we're the Gen X generation. And the more I look at the Gen X generation, I'm like, we were actually pretty screwed. <laughs> like, like there was a lot of neglect going on. Yeah. It gave us the capacity to be independent, mm -hmm. which I know you and I are from that same genre. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but it also came at a cost of our brains were taxed yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. And so if we go back to the question of what do I think about ADHD, I've seen people completely shift yes. that. Um, I've also yeah. seen people be diagnosed it after a major life yes. event or a major surgery. And, you know, what you said about labels is, you know, all I can say is if you're living and dying on a label and, you know, this might seem harsh, but I don't care anymore <laughs> where I am in my career. It's like, this yeah. isn't helping and you're attached to it. Mm -hmm. And, um, everyone's special. Yeah. Everyone, we are. Everyone's diverse. Great. Um, everyone has unique traits because I do believe in a soul yes. and I believe in spirit and I believe on in purpose and mission and dharma and I also believe in karma and yeah. so it's like why is this happening to me I don't know I mean you could go deep dive into past life trauma and why this is occurring or you can just work with your physiology now yes yeah and what, agree what, what will happen from my experience again looking at my students but even myself like i actually am enjoying counting a bit more and that, mm. i'm not like going to math class or anything like that but um, my husband really wanted me to start playing mm. crib and i hate, I hate cards like i just don't, I don't like either them. And, card person. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this as an exercise for my brain and get over this weird block I have with simple counting. Because when you play crib, you have to count mm. to 15 and 31, and you got to look at numbers and all these things. But what's interesting is that I started to do this again with him just a couple weeks ago, and I actually was enjoying it. I'm like, what's mm. changing? And it's because I keep moving moving out of these layers that my body has been mm. trapped in probably mm. since I know since in utero. Yeah. And so to go back to your thing to about addiction, I was just talking to one of your FBSM peers, Rachel Martin, where we'll, we'll release the interview in March. And she's like you, she's had cousins die of fentanyl overdoses. Mm -hmm. Her dad was an alcoholic. She was into drugs. Like it was like both sides of the family. Yep. And even she, and she, he now works in a wow. drug and rehab uh, facility wow. teaching polyvagal. It's so cool. Wow. And, um, and she's clean and sober. And she even said, no, it's not genetic. I, I look 
look at what happened to my ancestors and the history, yeah. they needed to take the edge off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, it's and I always go back to Dr. <laughs> Dr. Gabor Monte when he, I think it was on the Tim Ferriss podcast that I sure. listened to this maybe 10 years ago plus, yeah, yeah. but it's always stuck with me. And I know we've talked about it before, but he's like, how many people that you know that are overweight also have overweight pets? <laughs> yeah. Is it really, not, is it not coincidental? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I yeah. see that time and yeah. time again. And it's not necessarily, it's like, yeah, the one, the parents are obese, the children can also be obese, is how much of this is genetics? And there is a genetic predisposition. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Sure. But how much is the trauma and, and the, how much are those things playing yeah. into this? That's yeah. just like what I had to question with my family history and yeah. alcoholism and yeah. drug abuse of like, what happened in this family line? Yeah. What in the world, on both lines, uh, attracted my parents to one another well, to create this. And now I'm here like, okay, this is stopping. Uh, this is not going, you yeah. know, and again, am I picking up alcohol? No, I'm not, I'm not playing around with that. There was a second there when Dr. Anthony J did that genetic report and he's like, you don't have the alcoholism gene. Then I was like, oh, I could probably get, no, we're not. <laughs> Like, <laughs> let's try to find it. <laughs> let's, let's just not, let's just leave that, yeah. you know, put that to bed, yeah. leave it alone. Um, yeah, it, but it, it really like made me think like yeah. how much of this, and we do have, we have a question oh, yeah. in the chat. So if, if anybody is watching and they have a question, Irene would love to answer your questions. And just to segue anybody who's joined, Irene's smart body, smart mind program is open right now. It's only gonna be open for like a, a few oh, more days or so, a week yeah. or so, right? close on next Thursday. So next a little, Thursday. little longer. A little, a week. A little longer. Um, so there's um, a link to that in my bio under my product guide. It's in the product guide. You just scroll down. It's for her smart body, smart mind. I've done it. It's fantastic. But if you have been watching Irene and her work, there's only like two times a year that she opens yeah. this program. So this is one of those. So thought we'd do a live stream and answer some questions. But somebody says emotionally abusive parents slash family as toxins. Yeah. Can we talk more about this? Which we kind of are, sure. but I mean, maybe we could specifically go to that question. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll make the connection as to why our students will shift out of these, you know, alphabet diagnoses when they regulate their nervous system. And then mm -hmm. I'll get into the emotional thing because it's mm -hmm. all the same thing, mm -hmm. it's all the same thing. So, so if we are struggling with these mm -hmm. things, addiction, chronic illness, you know, attention disorders, depression, anxiety, chronic pain, all those things. Mm -hmm. um, there is very strong evidence, and I know this through my own practice, that dysregulation in the autonomic nervous system, so this is where, and I'm, I'm really simplifying this, where our fight, flight, and freeze survival mechanisms, which we want, by the way, we want to have fight, flight, freeze when there is an actual threat. Right. But what has happened to us, and I'm saying us as a cult, as a, like a humanity right now, is because we have a higher brain, we can actually override the survival stress that we're in. And we will figure out ways to micromanage our PTSD. Over time, this pops into complex PTSD, or it pops into a chronic illness, or it pops into some form of I say this with quote mental mm -hmm. disorder, but we again know similar to ADD. Again, all these um, older folk elders within my world, they're saying all of these diagnostic psychiatric disorders are connected to early trauma, emotional mm -hmm. abuse, neglect, obviously physical, sexual abuse. Um, one of the biggest ones that's not talked about is lack of attunement and attachment, mm -hmm. secure attachment. Disasters happen when a little one is not properly secured mm -hmm. and attached to a primary caregiver. And so, so let's just say that's happened and that's happened to pretty much most of us. Mm -hmm. Just the way it yeah. is. It's not to like blame anyone, but it's also to take, to say we have to take responsibility if we want to make Make the world a better place not mm -hmm. to sound cliche but that's true we have to do this work for ourselves to come out of these survival responses mm -hmm. and so when, when we start to regulate our nervous system and I don't just mean um, the act 
activate the nervous system through mm -hmm. a breath technique or a tapping right. exercise those right. are or meditation we've talked about this in other talks like those those techniques and tools are great for quick shifts. Yeah. If you need to get out of a state of activation or get mm -hmm. yourself out of a slump of collapse, then go for it. But my interest and in what um, Smart Body, Smart Mind is, it is literally going back to the building blocks of what we needed when we were infants mm -hmm. and children. We're not doing inner child work. We're doing somatic nervous system work that is teaching the person the student how to reconnect to their insides mm -hmm. how to reconnect to the environment and then how to put it all together um i did a longer talk on pain yesterday mm -hmm. Sarah, mm -hmm. on my instagram so if someone wants a deeper dive about how smart bodies like the specifics of what we work with like the diaphragms the joints the layers the kidney adrenals the gut the brain the vagus nerve the feldenkrais like i go through that Mm -hmm. um, because it can be really difficult to be like what we've been told that these things are um not characteristics we can change it's and even you know i'll, I'll say I, I catch tim ferris saying this because he mentioned him he talked about how we're wi hardwired i'm like we're not, we're not hardwired like, yeah, i have brown hair you have blonde hair okay that's mm -hmm. just that's pretty wired mm -hmm. in like we can say that's truly genetic mm -hmm. but these problems that we have aren't because if they were if they were part of just how humans are supposed to be sarah we would not know humanity would not have survived no babies no. the way that that there's so much trouble with fertility yeah. right now and and the fact that so many women can't give birth naturally mm -hmm. even though they want to that's an indication that the system is not well yeah we're not connected to this body and how are we supposed to continue if we're not connected to this right. body and the autoimmune issues that oh yeah i mean these are and i know the They're last here. i think it was september the last time that you did smart body smart mind yeah. your heart was open we had a two talks on mm -hmm. these autoimmune conditions yeah. and the nervous system yeah. and it's i mean it's like i think it's crucial because autoimmune conditions are exploding and i get them in my groups all the time. And I, again, I think that what you do and what I do goes together very well I think because you teach the orienting and the nervous system piece. And I teach like how to integrate that in a practical way. Oh, they're, the, they're a math made in heaven. Yeah. The nutrition, yeah. all of it. I think it's, yeah. it's fabulous. Um, but you know, I get the autoimmune people and it's like common personalities, com like yes. always is, uh, looking out for everybody else you know and yep. i say this in the most loving and non-judgmental mm -hmm. way but mm -hmm. all my autoimmune and it's usually ladies i don't have a ton of men mm -hmm. they are putting they're sacrificing themselves yeah and it's like they've done that for years and years and years maybe they did it as yeah. children in their family they took on that role oh it's huge and, and then they yeah. transferred it when they had their yeah. own children and families. Yeah. And then all of a sudden their body is, is like, I have to attack myself. And yeah. it's, um, yeah. yeah. You have to attack yourself. And I mean, this is where I still think Gabor Mate's, his two best books, in my opinion, are When the Body Says No. Yes. We talked about that. And um, Scattered Minds oh, yes. here in Canada, I think it's called Scattered. And that, that to my, in my opinion, is the best parenting book. It's, it's on ADD and ADHD. Mm -hmm. It's great. But great. It, it's so good. But I've, I've worked with folk um, who have healed fully autoimmune and to the point where their blood markers, yeah, same, you same. know, like no antibodies, like, like, right. Yes. So that, yes. that, that shows so much. And, and yes, they did die. And yes, they did all these things, but it wasn't, an, it, and this is a true story. It wasn't until they got into the deep traumas of their mm -hmm. past that they were able to let go i don't like to use the word let go but move out of fight flight mm -hmm. freeze that had been trapped in their system since they were like five years mm -hmm. old when they had an abuse mm -hmm. right and i hear this story um, again and usually it's women I, men do suffer from this stuff but it's less common from mm -hmm. what i've seen um or they're just better at staying in functional freeze which could be another theory um but these women will say, I remember when I was six, when I was diagnosed with depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but it always was after they had been either raped by a family member or they had had a massive life event change. Mm -hmm. A parent died, a, a mm -hmm. pet died. Something happened at school that was really scary, you know, and nothing helped them move out of that because we just didn't know. Right. Um, and, and so the people that I've talked to who have lived through and have healed autoimmune, they actually don't even call it autoimmune. They, they're like the body would never attack itself. Right. And the bo body is screaming these symptoms, this physiology, because it's under massive duress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a question I want to get here. Someone mm -hmm. asked, um, do you recommend DNRS or Gupta? These are two programs. Mm -hmm. um, I have long COVID and had these programs suggested for the nervous system. So I'm only going to, I can only talk about what I've heard. Mm -hmm. I have students that have done both DNRS and Gupta. I have no, and some people will say they got some good stuff. They got some elements but i have heard it has not healed their nervous systems because they're too focused on the brain yes now someone might be going what irene the brain i thought you work with the brain i actually don't work with the brain and i talked about this in my uh talk on pain yesterday i know the brain's there of course it has to be there and a lot of people talk about rewiring the limbic system mm -hmm. brain rewiring. the brain is still an end organ yes it computes and let yes it interprets things of course but it is like I'm gonna to point to my viscera, right? It's the lungs, it's the heart, it's the organ, it's the tissues of the body. These are the things we have to work with. And um, to answer the piece about long COVID, yes, we've had people that have said, we're just about to release um, a screen grab from our program forum where someone was like, I would, I would not be well if it wasn't for learning how to rewire my nervous system, not the brain, but the mm. nervous system because um, they were struggling with these symptoms of deep, deep, deep um, fatigue due, due to long COVID. And um, I can't tell you now if, if the mitochondrial piece got fixed, because I know that it impacts the mitochondria, it's but I do know- Related, that, you know, there's yeah, the, 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 the water, the, cell, the cellular yeah. water becomes impacted by Thank these you. things, you know, we get Thank into you. talking about some McCary's work, which I integrate into yeah. all of my work yeah. as well. But like, when you can impact that cellular yeah. water from the type of things that you teach, yeah. there is a there's coherence that happens, and you can actually you. change yourself on that cellular level, yeah. where you see the antibodies go down or be non existent yeah. there that is absolute that's that's how I believe the mechanism works on that uh, quantum bio biological I'm glad you said the word coherence because yes. I don't use that very often because it gets confusing to me it's just good flow in the system yes um, and again I talked about this on the pain talk I did last night where you know it's not enough to just feel the feelings and process the emotion mm -hmm. those are important but those emotions those feelings are sensations mm -hmm. and those sensations arise from the body they don't arise from the brain we interpret them in the brain but that there's a reason why someone says i have butterflies in my stomach or my you know i feel like i have a knife in, in my back you know or someone's walking all over me or i've got this i feel like i'm choking mm -hmm. you know the throat is because like all these things that we say around around feeling mm -hmm. not well mm -hmm. references often to the body and yet we don't focus on it in mm -hmm. this way. Um, so again, I, just from experience, I know people that have gone through these programs, I have no doubt they offer some elements that are really important, but I, I just haven't seen people say this has been the, everything. Like I, they have not been able to get to this core somatic level because it's too thought based. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And there's, there's one, um, you know, and I hear this a lot, like, and I've actually had this conversation with my mom yesterday because okay. okay. I was trying, I was trying, I, it's, uh, you know, with your parents, you have to just kind yeah. of at a certain point, like we're Gen X, like we got the boomer parents. And so yeah. <laughs> love, love baby boomers, but I'm very, <laughs> I claim Gen X, even though I was only in it by six months. Um, I still am like claiming Gen X, yeah. <laughs> but she was saying the other night and I just saw kind of a comment slash question about, um, when I got diagnosed with ADHD, mm -hmm. everything made 
made sense. Sure. Like sure. everything in my adult life makes sense now that I have this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of what my mom was saying. And I was just like, well, it's because of the nervous system dysregulation piece that it all makes sense. Yeah. It's not necessarily because you have a label now that like yeah. you have to live and die by these things that, yeah, yeah they, they, because the nervous system is dysregulated in a specific way, mm -hmm. that is what is the downstream impact of that dysregulation, yeah. right? And you're, it's not a, um, not a death sentence. I was just a side note, like, and I want to hear mm. your, your yeah. thoughts on what I just said, but just a side note, I was dying for everything that you're saying is so right on at 14. I was diagnosed with ADD, depression, anxiety. I was put on multiple medications. Mm. What happened? My parents split up. My dad mm -hmm. was di diagnosed with a uh, terminal illness. Mm -hmm. I was told he was going to die within four mm -hmm. years. And he mm -hmm. split. He went to Miami to live his best life because he knew he was going to be dead in four years. And all of a sudden, You're alone. my life is apart, falling apart. And I'm 14 years old. Yep. And within just a few yep. months, you have ADD, yep. you have depression and insomnia. Here's three medications. And you know, and that was it. Welcome to parenting in the nineties. And my mom did the best she could, but that just validates everything yeah. you just put out there. And so what does someone that gets a diagnosis like this? Yes. Maybe they've had some sort of traumatic event, or maybe it's even handed down through the family. Like we've been talking about in this discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you say to that of like, everything makes sense now. Cause I have this diagnosis and I fit this criteria, yeah. you know, so how can one get that diagnosis and see the criteria, but then go one step or 10 steps mm -hmm. further, which is what does that mean? Right? So attention, hy attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. When our attention is in deficit, we are not able to be safe. Mm -hmm. There, there is, it's, we're looking for danger. And this is classic with not just kids, but adults is they will say, and here's a question I, I would ask anyone who is maybe thinking, oh gosh, was, what was it like in my child? Because people will say, my childhood was fine. I had tons of food. Nobody hit me. My parents were alcoholics. Like, it's like, well, that, that's one way that there can be unsafety in a house. The other way is where we're not paid attention to, mm. where we're not touched and hugged and connected with and our feelings aren't listened to you know the class that go to your room if you're you know go to your room if you're being a nuisance it's like well why is that kid being a nuisance they're looking for some sort of attention so you know if i was to say to folk you know when was the last time you felt safe or what is it like in your body when you said safety and if someone goes if they have to take more than a second to answer that mm. they're not safe safe and they've probably never been safe. And so this attention deficit hyperactivity, it is what we would call defensive orienting. It's constantly looking for a threat. And that can happen through like hypervigilance and you see people that have those eyes that are bugged out. And mm -hmm. often when I see someone like that, I'm like, I bet they had an accident. I bet they were hit, you know, like these sorts of things. But then there's the pe person that's really together. Yeah. And they don't show these things, but they're br inside their brain. It's just going a mile a minute, trying to figure out things, figure mm -hmm. out things, how to control mm -hmm. your OCD. OCD comes in phobias. Like these are not chemical imbalances and set diseases. We've had people get over massive phobias through this work. And again, just seeing all these things, it's like, okay, this is, this is really a result of dysregulation of the nervous system. Someone said here, Sarah, um, uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD. I've had it my whole life and mm -hmm. see similar traits. In, in my two, boys. Yeah. Two of, my, that one. Four, two of four of my boys. Yeah. So yes, because if we have that wiring that doesn't just happen when you're 40, like this is something that you get Been there young, yeah. young mm -hmm. through your connection with your parents and your adaptive strategies to stay alive in the world. So if you're system is is living in this dysregulation that let's say is functional your vagus nerves so i'll bring in the good old <laughs> vagus nerve the way that you ventrally connect the way that you see and 
and look and and then how you hold and touch your baby, the tone of your voice, your internal safety or not safety or not safety. That is going to infuse into not just the infant and the child, but in utero. Mm -hmm. This is what Gabor Mate talks about a lot, especially in his um, book on addiction. He talks oh, about one. his life oh, growing up during the yeah. Holocaust. Yes. And, and there's been studies with mothers from that genre and more recently 9-11. Um, mm -hmm. and, and these kids are born with higher cortisol levels. And it's not because the mother doesn't love them and want the baby. It has nothing to do with that. It is the physiology. And this can be triggering for some parents because there can be a massive, massive shame that mm -hmm. I screwed up my kid. And I'll, you know, borrow a statement from one of my mentors who works specifically with kids, specifically kids who have been adopted. He would say to the parents, yeah, you did and that's okay and now we're going to work with it mm -hmm. we're going to work to heal your system and heal their mm -hmm. system so that things can change but if we just i think with the diagnosis it can be so convenient to go oh they have this i have this it's just something genetic let's figure it out from that perspective mm -hmm. i un i understand the convenience mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. i really do and if one can just go a little farther with this and be like, okay, what is it that I'm holding in my system? What did I pass on? And the thing is, Sarah, is I didn't realize how much I had been in functional freeze until just the last seven, seven, really four years, if I'm really honest. Like I knew I was 10 years ago when I was in my somatic experiencing training, but holy moly, like things have not really uncovered until the last five or so years um for whatever reason i don't know why but it's like wow there was a lot that my little system was holding on to when i was little mm -hmm. this is why i couldn't learn this is why i was always getting tummy aches in mm. this is you know why um i went to to being really um reckless with uh sport and doing drugs that i probably shouldn't have been doing when i was a teenager as yeah. we all do you know, especially our I, Gen X. We were pretty, <laughs> we were pretty naughty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but we did that because we were trying to get out of freeze. Yeah. yeah. We were so frozen emotionally. We needed to drunk, drink and drive. We needed to go to the clubs mm -hmm. and dance to hardcore music and all these things to feel ourselves. Yeah. Right. So um, uh, the, the parent that's here, I'm actually going to be doing a parenting panel like when I hang up with you yes. at top of the air hour. And we have got, um, I think like seven moms mm. on that panel who have moved through smart body, smart mind of differing ages. Some still have little kids, some have grown adult kids. Um, and these are people who have healed autoimmune ADD, all these things that we've been talking about. So I recommend people coming and listening to that because it really shows how important it is is for parents to do this work and that your your babies and even your adult children will shift when you do this work mm. for yourself it, it it it's because we're in that field it's that quantum yeah. entanglement right yes. it's the, that the moment that that primary mother figure shifts and of course you know um that the children it doesn't they don't have to be living with you like i've had mm. mothers who have adult grown children who don't live with them say, I started to do this work for myself. I didn't tell anybody in my family. And within a few months, my adult son, who I think this one woman, he was in his thirties, she came, he came to me and he said that he was interested in the nervous system and healing his nervous system. Mm -hmm. And she had never said anything to him. Now, of wow. course, it's also because popular press is yes. talking about it and it's a bit more, you know, alive out there in the internet. So I understand that's mm -hmm. happening too. Mm -hmm. But there, there's like, I don't know, I, I'm hopeful when I hear these stories, yeah. like it shows that we can actually shift generational trauma faster than we realize. Yeah. It doesn't have to take like a hundred years. Right. It can, I love it. Well, it can, it can take one generation of a, of a mother or a father or two people saying, we're going to heal our traumas before we start start to have kids or we have kids, let's figure this out. So our little ones aren't having to do 
you know, 20 years of therapy mm -hmm. when they're, when they're mm -hmm. 20 to mm -hmm. figure out right. this stuff. Great. Well, a um, couple yeah. questions. So first, anybody watching, Irene's program is open for the next week and a day if you're interested in her Smart Body, Smart Mind, which I've done and love it. And there's a link in my bio. And if you're watching this replay, I'm going to put the replay on YouTube, put the yeah. links in the pinned comment. But if you go to my product guide, it's a third link down, you'll find Irene's programs all linked mm -hmm. there. Um, if someone went to watch this panel that you're doing yeah. in like 20 minutes, how could they watch that? <laughs> so if you go to two places, you can go to my bio on Instagram and there's a links page and it literally like, look for the parenting little parenting panel. Click on, okay. click on that. It'll take you right to zoom. And then, um, if you are watching this after that, we'll mm -hmm. put the recording up on YouTube and, and the same link will take you to the YouTube replay. And I really recommend listening to the last panels that I've done. We did one last Friday with just general alum talking about all their stories. And really, Sarah, like, <sighs> folks who are just like, I had no idea. I had no idea that these troubles I was having was because of my nervous system. Mm, mm. People were searching high yep. and low, therapy, vision quests, all the things, all the things. And... The one thing I'll say is that, and I hear this over and over again, is pe you have to persist mm -hmm. because you might start the core and you'll be like, I'll be really honest. They're like, this is a waste of money. I'm just sitting here staring outside. Like she yeah. tricked me. Like, what is uh, this? You yeah. know, uh, trust me. It gets it. it you, we don't realize as humans right now how much we have been conditioned to not be in our body. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. In an organic way, and what will what you'll hear from these alumni stories, especially one last week, um, is how you have to you have to stick with it. It's not mm -hmm. something you can do for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and if you don't see any results immediately, you stop. I know with the quantum work that you do, results can actually shift quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's But they also something so build. They build. So me, me five, you know, four years in to what I do is a hundred percent different than it was four years ago. I go. I'm a lot more resilient now. Yeah. I, um, I remember when you did your first talk with Jack Cruz. Yeah. I remember watching that when it came out. I was like, yep. this is cool. And I, now I look at where you are now and how so many more people know about it. Yeah. Like that's really po positive. So yeah. I wanted to just throw that in because if you're really new to me and you haven't taken the time to really go through my videos, but you're like, wow, I think I need to do this program. Know that, that again, from my experience, it does work when you do the work slowly, mm -hmm. consistently. Titrated. Over time titrated we're meant to be healthy yeah. we're not meant to be in these diagnostic boxes and it's just it's like it's gone to this level of intensity oh. with labels like oh it's like every insane day, every day there's a new alphabet like label and i'm like what's that one and i literally have to google it oh that's what that interesting. yeah <laughs> you i know? get it too i get it too and i'm like okay well <laughs> not to discount Fine. it and not yeah. to like say that it's invalid and people are, but the great news in my opinion is that it's not as complicated to work with these diagnoses that seem complicated as we've been led to believe, yeah. you know, and that's to me really good news yeah. and encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're, yeah. I, I will, and I'll put on, I'm going to repost this on YouTube and, and my audio only podcast Thank as you. well. I think it's a really valuable conversation. I'll put the link to your YouTube channel as well on top of all those links, because that's how I found you. I started okay. binge watching your YouTube oh, videos and yeah, then I was yeah. like, Oh my God, I have to, I have to know this woman. And this was like a few years ago. Then I brought you on my and podcast both. and then the, the, yeah. the rest is history. Yeah. We've been friends ever since. Yeah. And so, it's so yeah, good. it's, yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you, Sarah. Thank you so yeah, much. And thank yeah, you. If anybody had a question and, and we didn't get to the question, um, I'll be doing another Q&A uh, on Monday, I think. And I'll be here on IG and my support team. Just email us. Mm -hmm. Like, if, even if you're just, it's the silliest question, just ask. Yeah. Ask, ask, ask. Awesome. Ask. I thank love you. it. Thank you, Irene. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.
I hope you enjoyed today's chat with Irene Lyon. As I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, all of her links, her free YouTube channel, where you can watch those panels that she mentioned, as well as her program, the Smart Body, Smart Mind program, and her 21 day nervous system tune up program are linked in the show notes for you. If you're watching on YouTube in the pinned comments, if you want to check those out, make sure to check those out in that pinned comment or in the show notes. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, I'm offering just for this weekend only up to 60% off of my 21 day program, as well as my nutrition program, when you get it as a 60 day access pass. So check those out. I am not sure I will continue to offer this, but I'm just doing it as a test to see if people are interesting, interested in accessing my work this way at a lower price barrier to entry. And I also have tons of free resources always in the show notes for people who just want to get started on this journey at no cost. It's always available and I'm always happy to release free information. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful rest of your day. I will chat with you again very soon.